this evening we're going to be looking at John Constable, uh, who's a British artist. So we looked at um, William Hogarth last time, who was also British. Uh, so we're keeping with the British theme and looking at one of, probably one of Britain's most, one of England's most famous paintings, and that is The Haywain uh, by John Constable, painted in 1821, or sort of between 1820 and 1821 painted very quickly uh, in about five months. But it has become kind of one of our most iconic paintings, one of the country's most iconic paintings. Uh, it hangs naturally in the National Gallery. Um, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, if not in person, perhaps on a, a tea towel or a jigsaw or um, some sort of crockery or something in some museum shop somewhere. Um, it probably is one of our most iconic paintings in the UK. We can see this is actually quite a whopper of a painting, which you really don't get a sense of when you're looking at an image of it on screen. Um, it's about, it's 185 centimetres wide, um, which is actually very relevant when we're talking about this painting because it is six foot wide and it was part of what came to be known as the Six Footer series by John Constable, uh, painted between 1819 and 1825. It is quite a gentle scene um, we have a wagon in the centre of the picture, or just off centre to the right hand side, uh, a small cottage there, um, and this body of water which is sort of reflecting the sky above it, um, through which this wagon is making its way. Um, some, lovely, some lovely stormy trees um, and some distant fields and woodland, um, and then some brighter skies to the right hand, uh, top right hand corner, uh, and beneath which there's a small fishing boat. Um, so I think it's important to start really by saying that this painting had enormous sentimental value for John Constable um, because it is composed of a series of studies that he made around his home in Suffolk. So he was born in 1776 um, in Suffolk in a village called East Burkholt um, and he, he paints this scene about this scene's sort of uh, um, the location is about a mile away from where he was born. Um, but it's actually surprising to learn um, that it was, uh, it was actually painted in, um, in London, in his studio on Charlotte Street, for those of you who know London. Um, and Constable spent his childhood in Suffolk, but he moved quite young in his mid, early mid-twenties to London, um, where he was accepted into the Royal Academy School. So for those of you that don't know, the Royal Academy of Arts um, is famous for its exhibitions, but it has a very famous and very well-renowned art school, which is really um, what it was founded upon in 1768. Um, and he comes in 1799 and he starts um, a course there at the schools. Um, and this usually consists of life drawing um, and, and drawing from antique casts um, and a very sort of classical training. Um, but Constable was continually kind of carrying with him um, this, this, uh, this love of the Suffolk countryside, the English countryside. Now, this was both a blessing and a curse because in his, in his time, sort of in the contemporary um, uh, art world, landscape painting was deemed um, very inferior in terms of genre. And um, really at the top you had kind of history painting, uh, which involves kind of religious painting, Old Testament scenes uh, or, or mythological scenes. And then you have portrait painting. Then you have kind of everyday scenes, so genre scenes. And then really you have landscape kind of at the bottom with still life painting. So it wasn't particularly admired um, as a genre. And um, landscape painting is kind of, it was a sort of new phenomena in the, in the 17th century. So it had never really been a genre in its own right. Um, in the Renaissance, for example, it often provided a sort of backdrop to a religious scene, for example. And then in the 17th century, it really starts to kind of come to the fore and become a genre in its own right, mainly in the Low Countries. So in, um, in Northern Europe, um, artists such as um, Jacob van Rysdale, um, a famous Dutch landscape painter, um, and of course Rubens, who paints a lot of landscapes towards the end of his life, who's a Flemish artist, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, and these artists were artists that Constable was incredibly fond of. He was looking back 
um, to these old masters. Um, and he, in fact, had his own small collection of, of um, uh, Dutch and Flemish paintings um, from this period, uh, which he would use as a source of inspiration. Now, it's fairly important to, to note that um, although he had a kind of fairly affluent upbringing, um, he was constantly sort of uh, struggling not only financially, but also with his confidence around his works of art. Um, he was continually kind of batted back because this, um, this landscape uh, genre was sort of inferior and also because of his painting technique, um, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute. Um, but he had this kind of patron, this sort of network of patrons, but mentors and, and friends who he, he kind of continually called upon. And one of these was a man called Sir George Beaumont, who he met before he joined the school. So really in his, in his, in his youth, um, and he had this magnificent collection of old master paintings, um, which in fact became, we've probably heard his name before in these sessions, sort of became um, part of the kind of founding collection of the National Gallery. He had Hetstein by Rubens, one of Rubens' most famous landscapes. And in fact, Constable talks about this specific painting saying that, you know, Rubens was, was the artist who was able to kind of uh, uh, capture um, capture these kind of the effects, I think he calls it, um, the effects of nature. So this idea of really looking at nature in order to paint it versus kind of having this sort of fairly contrived academic scene, um, which, was, which was very much kind of in vogue at the time, this sort of academy painting. Um, uh, and, and I think it become obvious that this isn't what he's doing um, when we look a little bit closer at the picture. Um, so, as I say, he had a fairly affluent upbringing. He was, um, he was the son, Constable was the son of uh, um, a man called Golden Constable, who was in fact a corn miller and merchant. And they had a fairly prosperous business um, uh, based from East Bergholt. But the, the business and the mill was based, in fact, right here where we're, where we're looking. Um, which is Flatford Mill. Well, this is Flatford Mill Pond, which we're looking at straight ahead of us. Um, on the left there, we have a little cottage, which you can, in fact, still go and visit today. Um, that is the cottage that is sort of part of Flatford Mill. Um, and it was, in fact, inhabited by a man called Willie Lott. Um, and he was a very close friend of the family and a tenant farmer um, on, this, on this mill, which had been... Um, the Constable family had been sort of uh, had leased for, for sort of almost a century. So, you know, this amazing cottage, I'm going to go really close. Um, you can see he's got even done the sort of glass, um, these sort of uh, glazed windows, paned windows. Um, and up here as well, you can see this window um, has, been, has been left open. Um, so he's really kind of adding detail here. But one thing you'll really, really notice coming close is that Constable has this unbelievable, um, uh, un unbelievably sort of broad handling, this very kind of loose application of paint. You have much looser handling, um, and that is something that Constable was very much criticised for. Um, not only was he painting landscape, but he was painting in this very kind of sketchy manner, which of course became incredibly popular and influential because um, as we'll discuss later, of course, when you know the Impressionist, when you look at the Impressionist painters, for example, the Barbizon school, so the 19th century French artists, we can see that this very kind of loose, sort of almost smoky um, effect becomes incredibly popular and the idea of kind of figuration um, very much gets shifted to the sidelines. Um, and, and the idea of sort of losing this this um, uh, this clear definition is 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 a very is very popular. Um, but so we have Willie Lott's cottage on the left, and just to zoom in again, um, we have this wonderful lady um, out on the on the jetty here, uh, perhaps his wife. I'm not quite sure, um, but she's reaching down into the water. Um, you can see she's got this this sort of jug behind her. Um, leaning into the water and just this kind of very, very um, sort of light streak or sort of um, scrape almost of, of white paint just to give this sense of her arm entering into the water. Um, and as we all know, mill ponds uh, tend to be incredibly sort of, sort of calm um, and, and, and very smooth. 
um, and, and I can, you can just imagine her arm sort of breaking the surface of the water there. Um, and I love the way that her arm beneath that scrape of white paint is sort of reflected uh, here in the water as well. Um, actually, we know that he used a kind of palette knife as well, and we can see the water here um, all over the pond, just kind of continuing that theme of this um, reflection in the water and how he kind of gets that effect. You can see that he's really kind of scraping a very, very thin layer of white paint um, over the water. And of course, this really is because that is a reflection um, of these clouds uh, above, these bright clouds above. And I think one of my favorite things about this painting is this very sort of dull light that's cast here by the trees and these stormy, dark clouds above, very, very British uh, scene. We're all very familiar with those dark, stormy clouds and the way that clouds have such um, an effect on water. So, you know, if you're in a, a, a tropical place or you're on a lovely beach and water feels bright blue or, or very clear, um, it's usually because the sun is out and shining on it. And if the sun goes in, it becomes kind of gray and cold. And I think we really get that sense looking at this sort of half of the painting. Um, and Constable was all about balance. If you think this painting, just to go out again. You know, it's really kind of divided. This half of the canvas is much duller. Um, there's a, a gray kind of stormy um, squall brewing uh, above, the, above the trees. Um, and then there's this sort of breakout into open space and clear blue and white um, skies. Now, what is the scene? So the scene is really just an observation of everyday life. We have this wagon um, which in fact gives, its, its, um, gives the painting its name, uh, the wain, the hay wain, meaning the hay wagon, um, which is kind of making its way across the, um, the ford. Um, this is flat ford mill, um, obviously flat uh, ford meaning sort of uh, very shallow depth of water. And we can see this cart making its way across the ford being pulled by these three um, horses uh, dressed in this fantastic, um, with these fantastic kind of br bright red tasseled collars um, pulling this wagon, which you can see is turning to the right, sort of so slowly kind of groaning around to the right hand side, um, off onto this kind of flat area here um, to join this wagon and these haymakers um, in the fields beyond. Um, so this is a wagon going to collect the hay that's being um, cut in these distant meadows. Um, and we can see there's already a wagon here. Um, we can see this sort of loaded wagon, again, just sketched in incredibly uh, economically, these sort of splodges of paint to, to suggest figures um, and this towering wagon of hay. And then we can see in the fields here, these figures um, cutting the hay with um, their sides and, um, and, 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 and collecting it in order to, to put it onto the, to the wagon there. I think we've even got some, some cows in the distance, which is rather nice. But you can see this kind of very um, out of focus um, uh, execution, which is, is very typical of, of const Constable's technique. As I said, these bright red tassels on the horses. So we have a horse here, another one here, and then there's one at the back there. Now, interestingly, um, these were kind of, um, uh, the horse's harness around its neck was then um, topped with the, these kind of collars. Um, and they were really to kind of keep the wet off the, the harness so it didn't rub on the horse to keep the damp off, the rain off. Um, and they were often or sometimes decorated with these red tassels. Now, we know that haymaking is sort of June to August. Um, so this is very much a summer scene. Um, so it's quite unusual for these sort of, uh, these, these um, collars to be worn um, at this time of year because it's less likely to rain. Added to which the tassels um, are also very unusual to be attached. The collars will stop because these are usually employed for kind of um, ploughing races or, or, or sort of um, the pomp. They were, they were sort of decorative um, uh, sort of at attachments for these collars. So they 
pr probably wouldn't have been used just for their day-to-day -day, uh, collecting of hay. But one thing that Constable is incredibly um, intent on or, or, or um, very much um, sort of consistently does across his paintings, and you'll notice it now, is that he uses these sort of bolts of, of bright red paint to kind of pull his painting together um, and to, to, um, to kind of create a focal point um, on, the, on the canvas. So if we just pull out again, you're very much drawn in by this very central point um, of these bright red tassels. Um, so not particularly realistic, um, but, but something that's very much going to kind of enhance uh, the, the sort of feeling, um, the result of the painting. Um, now, interestingly, talking of, of balance, uh, Constable had a practice of sort of making full scale oil sketches. Um, really, when he started painting these very large paintings in 1819, he starts creating these full scale oil sketches, which is very unusual practice. Perhaps you might sketch out the composition before and then paint the final canvas. Um, but in this, in this case, he does kind of the, the, the full sale, scale painting um, in a much looser um, sketch. And interestingly, in the sketch for this painting, um, which is at the Victorian Albert Museum, um, there was in fact a horse and a rider um, just here in front of the dog, or between the dog and the wagon. Um, now, that was obviously painted out um, and there was in fact then on top of it a barrel which we can actually see a ghost of here um, uh, put in and that has subsequently been painted out so he was obviously playing with the kind of balance of this composition um, and what worked and what didn't obviously you have the little dog here um, but what he has done to sort of offset the weight of the house i suppose um, and then you've got the wagon at the, at the center um, is just to add this tiny little boat here um, and this fisherman clambering through the undergrowth. Um, and, and that really, you know, without that, the whole painting would kind of slip off to the left-hand side. So he's really um, very, very in tune with how to make a balanced composition. Um, now, just on the composition, sorry, I'm zooming in and out, but the, the skies, as I, as I briefly touched upon earlier, are something that Constable was um, incredibly um, well known for, both, both then and now. Um, and he spent hours and hours studying the skies. Um, he's a sort of meteorologist dream because he actually accurately depicts um, cloud formations and um, he, he, uh, he really studied them in a kind of very scientific way. Um, it wasn't just purely for visual effect, of course, the result was um, successful to, to look sort of successful visually, but um, in order to do so, almost like an anatomy lesson, I suppose, you know, getting beneath the skin quite literally um, of these things in order to represent them in a faithful way. Um, and, uh, and he does that very successfully here. Uh, but thank you all very much for joining this evening and have a wonderful weekend.